Hi right, guys, so today we are going to, well, we're, we are selling this FB685E. Uh, it's a fire and burglary rated safe by Holland. Um, it's uh, 27 inches tall, 21 inches wide, and 20 inches deep, 20 inches and three quarters deep. Uh, we had a customer buy one uh, gun safe about a week or so ago, and now he's coming back to get another safe. So he's gonna get a fire and burglary rated safe this time. We are also going to be taking off the electronic keypad on this safe and we are going to replace it with a mechanical dial, one of these. So instead of the electronic that's on the safe, we're going to replace it with one of these. So we'll walk you through the whole thing and show you how the process is. And uh, hopefully by the time we're done with this, you'll understand how to swap out an electronic keypad for a manual safe dial. All right, so this is your FB685E. Uh, we are going to take this SNG electronic keypad off the safe and replace it with a standard mechanical uh, dial. So first things first, open up the safe. And now we are going to pull the inside panel off and start showing you how to take all that apart. All right, so first things first, let's remove the old uh, plate from the inside of the door so we can see what's going on behind it. Stuck in there. There's only six screws on this one. If you're doing like a gun safe or something, then you have a whole bunch of them you have to take off. All right, there goes the screws. So these are just little self tappers that they have in this particular one because it's metal. All right, there we go. There's the plate. Set that aside real quick. Set the screws up top. So, this is your relocker, right? This is a glass relocker. So if someone tries hitting it outside, drilling it, hits this plate, breaks, releases this cable, shoots this bolt down, and then the bolt will, if it was locked, if it was locked and this piece of glass broke because of someone drilling or attacking it, this suspended pin would no longer be suspended. It will drop into place. So it would drop through this hole right into here. It only gonna drop about that much and then boom, it's blocking your railing. And then you go back and forth, it's gonna be blocking your railing without even this being used. So first things first, let's move the relocker out of the way. It's out of the way, it can't fall into place just in case. Um, now I'm gonna take these screws out to remove the body. If I can attach this electronic cable here carefully. Let me get it with a flathead here. Okay. There we go. So there's that. That's the cable that passes through the body. So now I'm just going to remove these screws. Last one. The screws are the Phillips head on this one's a little strip. That's why it keeps walking on me. Okay, so there's that. That's out, that's out, that's out. Just loosen this. All I'm doing is taking out the old lock pack. Attached before I do anything else. Okay, everything is loose. Okay, there we go. So this, just let it pass through there. That's off. Here's my screws. Lock pack is off. Okay. Now on the other side of the safe, on this Okay, so we're gonna pull the battery out here. There's a little slide that goes back and forth. And these either push up or slide off. They're all different. I can't remember. I think this one's just a push up. Yep, there you go. Just pushed it up. The screws mount right there. So you just literally pop it on and it slides on. So there's your face plate. There's your lock pack. Now, these are the mounting screws for that. We'll see if those are the ones that are gonna be used for this new one or not. 
here in a second. So let me go ahead and get the, uh, the new dial. Set it here. Okay, so now uh, first thing I'm going to do is mount this plate to the outside so that that's in spot. So let me see if this one here. Yeah, so okay. These have to come off because it doesn't slide on like the other one anyway. So let me get this screw out, which here we go. It's like it's spinning on me. And for some reason, this one wants to just spin and spin. So, I have to put a little bit of tension on it. I don't know if I can get it to work like that, but let's try it. Nope. Hmm. What about this? So we got a problem screw here. So it's getting looser. Mm. That is weird. The whole head of it is moving actually. Very strange. So had to take a break here for a minute. Um, good thing we're making this video and have this example to show you because it's very rare that I have to do this. Um, basically, when I took out the two studs, which took me a minute, one of them was just kind of spinning in there. When I took out the two screws there that hold the other electronic faceplate on, uh, I actually realized that when I go to put the manual dial on, that the holes will not line up correctly. Um, they, uh, the spindle has to be going straight down the hole. Well, if, if you pay attention here, they but the, the screw holes are offset from the center. So I'm going to have to, which I've already marked, I'm going to have to drill a hole right here and right here and mount that keypad to it. And that is unusual. I usually don't have to do that. Um, so good thing it's on video, you guys can see how it's done. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill, cause there's metal and then there's concrete. So I'm going to drill through the metal and just a little bit through the concrete and use some tiny self tappers just to grab onto the metal and hold that thing onto the front of the safe. I had to, I took some time off screen here to double check everything because these holes were not centered because I guess they didn't plan on us taking it off and swapping it out, but which is very common still to be done. Um, because they didn't put it directly centered with it, it proposed a problem that maybe the spindle, which goes through, which is this, when it goes through, has to screw in to the lock pack, but it can't be at an angle like that, it can't be like this, it can't be like that, it can't be like this, it can't rub against the wall here, hit any of these things. So I had to make sure if I moved it over, would I still be able to accomplish to put this in while keeping these screw holes all lined up on the inside without putting a bind on the spindle? And the answer is yes, I think we can do it. Barely, but we can do it. So I'm gonna do it. So here's what we're gonna do right now. I'm going to first pre-drill the hole with some tiny, with a tiny drill bit here. And just, just big enough to get these uh, self tappers started. Okay, so there's my hole there. I'm just gonna take my time. And, and you gotta be careful not to let it lock on you too. So I'll, uh, I'll readjust it when I have to. Through the middle. Here comes the next one, which is right on the edge of a divot. So let me see if I can keep it from moving. Yeah, this one happens, so I have to drill up into 
so I can get that spot. I need it right there. Oop, right there. Sometimes you gotta get it just right so it doesn't walk on you. Okay. Drill bit broke. I'm gonna have to grab another drill bit. All right, so I've got the holes pre-drilled where they need to be, uh, at least most of the way there. Let me get this one there. So I'm gonna see about putting these self-tappers in now. You got your 12 o'clock marker and your 11 o'clock. Your 11 o'clock's used for changing the key, uh, the combination, and your 12 o'clock's for dialing your combination in. So let me just put this here, let me get the bottom one in. So we get the other one mounted. Okay, and then we use another short self tapper. I need a better uh, Phillips head than this. I'll try with this one. But all I'm going to do is just tighten this plate on so it's stuck to the front of the uh, safe. Yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Let me pre-drill the hole a little bit bigger. It looks like it's just a little off. But like I said, this doesn't happen that often. This makes it a lot more work than it needed to be. There. Now maybe I can get that in there a little easier. Okay, let's try it now. wants to keep sliding off it's because that one drill bit I had broke that was the right size let me grab another one all right we had to do a little bit of uh, adjustment here since this wasn't done right in the first place so we had to remove the holes so I'm trying to get that to work right now down so it's straight up and down which that looks like it is right there okay and then let's buckle this one down just a little okay I ain't moving just want to make sure that everything is going to rotate which it should Oops, hold on a second. Okay, the lock pack's not in on the inside yet though, so not home free yet, but it looks like we'll be all right. Um, okay, so the other thing is they didn't use the right screws to mount the lock pack on the inside. They did self tappers. Use these when you're supposed to use these. So another adjustment I have to make. So let's see if I can figure this out. Um, so the holes to mount the lock body on are also too big and you got to get the right sizes. So I have to have two short ones just to go in to the thing behind it. And then I need two longer ones to hold the, the pack on. So I'm going to gather those screws. Let me see if that does it there. Okay. So those will work for my long ones. I just need some short ones, which I think I pulled some here from earlier so I could use these. So now we're gonna get the camera on this side over here so you can see what's going on, on the back side. Okay, so now that I got that, so now I'm gonna screw the lock pack into this basically right here. 
So first things first is I'm gonna put the lock pack where it needs to go. And I'm gonna put some screws in to hold this thing in place. Okay, so let me grab that. I'm gonna use these long ones. Hopefully we can get it to work since these aren't what should be used for this. I guess it wouldn't be a problem unless you're swapping it out, which is what we're doing. So. I have to make sure that the screws go through the holes in the plate also because there is a hole for these to pass through this glass relocker plate behind it. So I am just trying to get that to fall within that. screw now so now that I got that there I'm gonna put the other one in that's caddy uh, not caddy corner sorry the other top one because the longer screws need to go on top because they have these risers these are gonna recess in a little farther so I'll put the shorter screws on there okay good to go make sure that the spindle screws through and works so I'm gonna get it through here and hold this in place there we go, good. That's what I was worried about, is I don't want this to come through at an angle like this, or like this, or like that, or any kind of bind. Every time I go to turn the, the spindle, it'll be rubbing and things just won't work right. So that's what I made sure before we did all of this, is that everything was gonna line up right before I made those extra holes. Um, there we go. Okay, so now that I got that in, what I'm basically gonna do now is okay i've got this in all the way if you notice when i turn it see how tight that is now it's loosening up right so i want to get it in that area where it's yeah, around there but not that tight and not that loose so i'm gonna find my happy little spot here i'm gonna get it tight and then i'm gonna back it one one whole turn pretty much does it for me it gives me plenty of play so now that I have that where I need it, I'm gonna put a marker on the farthest point back. Okay. And now I'm just gonna take this out, spinning it all the way out. And then what I'm gonna do is basically at the farthest point back that I marked this, which is there, I'm putting a line on it is all I'm doing. And that's what I'm going to cut off because these have to be cut down to the specific side. So anyone at home that's saying, oh, I could do this really quick. It's very easy. Hopefully you see by this video that it's a little bit more labor intensive than you might be uh, bargaining for. So call locksmith. <laughs> so anyway, there's your cutoff point. I'm going to cut that off. And uh, with the Dremel, which I've got it prepped over there. Let me just grab it real quick. I can do it right now. Okay, I've got Randall holding this for me and put my safe uh, eye protection on. Okay, so I'm just going to cut it off right at that line. And I'm just going to like try to make my mark. There we go. It's not that hard to cut, it's pretty simple. I'm just taking my time because you can't put it back after you cut too much. Okay, I'm spinning. Oof, getting hot. That's it.
see that? All I'm is make it smooth. Okay. And all I'm doing is just all right. Perfect. That should thread in no problem. All right. So now I'm gonna put this in. All right. Screw it into the, uh, I'm gonna hold this little spindle piece in place. Oops, come on, where are you at? There we go. Okay, and you don't want it too long because if you put it too long, it's gonna rub the back of this plate. And when it rubs the back of this plate, you're gonna feel it, and you'll take it off and you'll see a scratch circle mark there. So I'm gonna get it just right. So now here's the other thing is, if you look in here, I want you to zoom in here for me real quick. Hopefully you can see these. So there's a VD, there's VU, there's uh, LH, and there's RH. That's left hand, right hand, vertical up, vertical down. Well, this is vertically down. So VD right there is what you need. So see that little piece that's moving around? That needs to line up with VD. So I've got it right there with VD. So now I'm gonna use what's called the spline which I saw here a second ago. Let me grab it. I think it's inside this box. A little bitty L, little L bracket. There it is. Okay, so this is a spline. That piece right there. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is take that and I wanna put it facing towards the inside. So like this, not outwards like that. So right there in between, between that crease, see that? And all I do at that point is basically just take something like this and just And that's also the reason why I wanna make it shorter because this is gonna stick out above and beyond that and that shit has to clear that face plate that's in there which I'm gonna test right now just by holding it over basically. Spins freely, which means we did a good job. So now I've got, uh, I need to put my two bottom uh, screws in here and secure those for one. Uh, the relocker plate, is, I mean relocker pin is good to go. We'll remove this pin right here. Uh, I forgot what they're called. Uh, but this pin right here, we'll remove whenever we go and deliver it. Uh, it's a retainer clip. And the reason why uh, it's not removing now is sometimes you're shaking around things and, and it could set off. So we'll wait to deliver it, then we'll remove the retainer pin and then this won't stop it anymore. If someone breaks the glass, then it'll drop into place. So for now, it'll just sit there hanging right above where it should go. Okay, so let me get these bottom screws in the bottom corner real quick. So I got two small self tappers that I was gonna use for there, which are right here. Let me just get these guys in there. It's a little cheesy little screwdriver here, not working. There we go. Make sure it's tight. You don't want the body walking around on you or anything like that. Usually these go on pretty flawless, but I use self tappers for this one, so. All right, that's not moving. Just wanna make sure that it's really tight. One more turn. Okay, we're good. Alright, one more down here. Boom. Oh, that one's going better. Okay, so your body's secure. Your dial's on there. Okay. Nothing's going nowhere. That's good. Splines in. Rotates freely. No play. I'm shaking it like this. No play really at all. Very good. So I believe everything is set to 50 on here right now. So if I just set it to 50, which I'm gonna need this back plate on because the back plate holds pressure on this little clip right here. 
And even if I dialed the right combination of this open, it wouldn't open because that doesn't have pressure on it. So let me put this back in its spot. Let me grab my two little screws that hold that in place, which I believe are these. Perfect. Yep. All right, there's our screws that hold the faceplate on. Cool. Just gonna tighten these down. Perfect. Set, set, we lock it through the screws, bind, good. Okay. So I'm just gonna see if it's set to the 50 code that it usually is. Sometimes they'll set it manufacturer, and it's literally just one number, 50. So I'm just gonna check real quick. And if it opens, then we are set. That's it. So uh, if, you, if, you know, if you notice, I'm gonna spin the dial right now after I use it has an automatic relock. So when the door closes, that happens. And then as long as I don't touch the dial, I can still retract the rails. But as soon as I turn the wheel on the outside, now it's locked again. So now if I dial on 50 again, here we go, 50 and boom. And that means free rotation. So we are good. So this is officially swapped out, works great. We had to do some modification and uh, surprisingly came out pretty good with it. Uh, no uh, big problem, so. Okay, so. Put this right there, cover the plate back up and like anything you ever do on safes, ever, test the door at least three times with it open. Test it, make sure it works. You change the code, do it with the door open, test it three times, and then lock it again on the fourth time and try it one more time just to close it up. I always make them do it multiple times to make sure that there's no chance that we left and oh, it didn't work and now it's messed up. So I always make it do them a bunch. I do it a couple times in front of them. Then the last time I say, here you go, uh, Mr. Customer, uh, go ahead and try your code right now and get into the safe. And then as soon as they get in, then I say, okay, you're set up, you're good to go. And we move on. So just putting in these last screws, putting the plate on. And we have officially swapped out an electronic keypad for a manual dial. This is very common. We do this fairly often. Um, it just a lot of people prefer the electronics to the manual dial. So um, lately we haven't been doing as many of them. But um, as you can see, it's it can be a little troublesome, especially if things aren't done for spec. Because if everything was done for spec, like the hole was drilled centered and things, which doesn't really matter unless I'm gonna be swapping this keypad out, which you could order them with it or without it. I ordered it without it because most people want electronic and then the customer wanted the manual. So I could do it. I just had to re-drill the mounting holes on the outside, which is harder than it looks. So, okay. So let's test this up one more time with the door open. Safe works. Like I said, I always do it a couple times. I've already done it a few, so it's the last one. 50. So we are good to go. Okay, thanks again for uh, watching. Uh, we appreciate the support. Uh, thanks for. Uh, sticking around and watching us put that keypad on. I know it took some time. We had to do some modifications, but at least that one's a really good one to learn off of because you got to see pretty much worst case scenario. Um, although there are worse things that could happen. Uh, thanks again for the support. Please follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn. We're on all the social media profiles, especially on YouTube. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit the like button. And if you have any ideas for videos, go ahead and put them in there in the comments. We'll try to make a video that uh, for what you want. And uh, thanks again.